Hi, I'm John from Our Home From Scratch, and in this video I'm going to show you how to draw a cabinet in SketchUp. Okay, so in our last video, we drew a very basic piece of 4x8 uh, and 3 quarter inch thick plywood. And in this lesson, we're going to expand our use and understanding of SketchUp Make, uh, and we'll draw a, a true 3D structure that's a little more complicated and a little trickier to draw for your beginner. And that um, structure will be a, we'll, we'll draw an upper kitchen cabinet. And then in future episodes, we'll draw so maybe a bottom cabinet and maybe a full set of uh, bookshelves or something like that. So in this video, we'll go ahead and dive in and get started with a frameless uh, upper kitchen cabinet. So let's go ahead and look at SketchUp. So I've got my canvas open here and I'm going to select my view. Uh, we'll do a forward view. And uh, so for an upper cabinet, the dimensions, so you know, they're going to be about 12 inches deep and the width varies but is in increments of three so 15 18 21 24 that sort of thing and the heights are usually like 30 30 inches 36 inches 42. so let's draw a 42 inch high cabinet that is 12 inches deep and let's go with 18 inches wide all right so we know our dimensions so, uh, since this is a frameless cabinet, there's a, there's a bunch of ways you can approach this, but we'll start by drawing our two uh, sideboards. Uh, so we're going to kind of draw this piece by piece. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to draw one of the sideboards, we're going to be drawing this looking front directly at the cabinet. So this will be 30, um, 3 quarters of an inch by, um, now I'm um, snapping this rectangle to drawing tool here and I'm looking at my bottom corner. So, the, so by, by looking at that, you can tell that the first number there in the bottom right, the five and a 16, so that's, uh, that's gonna be our thickness, and then our length is the 50. So I'm just gonna snap it like that, and now I can click down here and get rid of this. And let's just say three quarters of an inch by, and now we said the height of the cabinet's gonna be 42, so we'll do 42. All right, so, that doesn't look anything like we thought it would because it's changed the, the scale. So let's go ahead and snap that in. And I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to go to view, and I'm going to hide the axes, okay, so they go away. because That can be a little distracting. All right, so that's one of our sideboards. Uh, now I'm going to grab, grab my measuring tape, and I'm going to select anything on the edge here. Um, so what we do with this measuring tape, and this will snap guidelines for us. And uh, as you can see, I can grab anything on the side of this cabinet and also the midpoint. Um, but we're, we want to grab one of the red points, okay, anywhere on this edge. And we're going to pull it out. And I'm going to, I said an 18 inch wide cabinet, so let's go 18 inches. So I'm just going to snap this. Um, again, I can put it anywhere I want. Let's say, so it's 21 and 8, but I can change it to 18 inches. Okay, boom, now we have 18. All right, again, uh, so I want to kind of, so I, what I'm doing here is I'm, I want to draw the next um, front of that sideboard. Um, and if you're not quite getting this, you'll see in a minute once we start extruding these parts. But um, so I have a, um, our snap line here, our little guide that represents 18 inches from one end to the out, so from outside of the side to the other outside of the side. Um, but what I can also do is say, uh, I can draw, I can snap another line like three quarters of an inch over, okay? Um, but I, I could have also snapped the inside over to some measurement if I wanted to. Um, so I could have snapped the line from say here to here, okay? Uh, and we could also just use this tool to measure. So what is the inside dimension? And this will tell you it's 16 and a half, all right? And I can um, hit Control Z and undo those if I want to, um, so I don't, I don't want the extra guidelines. All right, so now what I want to do is I want a guideline here that corresponds to the top and the bottom of this, and this will allow us to keep these two units sort of uh, parallel and lined up. Uh, so I'm going to take my magnifying glass and I'm going to zoom in, okay, and then I'm going to use my arm, my little hand tool here, all right, to get to the top of this piece. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to use my measuring tape again and snap a horizontal guideline and it's 
a pain in the butt to do that unless you can grab that red dot. So you want that red dot to appear. So let's grab our measuring tape and there it is. All right, see, I can it snaps to midpoint or end point. I want it someplace right in the middle or on edge. So what I'm gonna do is pick that up, pull it back down, boom, all right? So now I have um, basically these two tops are lined up and I'm gonna pull this down get to the bottom and I'm gonna repeat that. Okay, so I'm moving this down, there we go. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna use my measuring tape tool. I'm gonna to grab the red. Uh, so I'm just, I'm not clicking anything, I'm just kind of hovering the mouse over, the, or the trackpad over that point. Now I'm gonna click, I'm gonna move it off, anywhere off the line and then snap it back. And now I have my guideline. So now if I zoom out, you can see where the next piece will be. So now I can uh, select my rectangle tool and I can just, um, select that corner and pull it all the way down to this corner. Boom, now I have my other rectangle. Now we get to see what the cabinet building was really gonna to start to look like here with, with SketchUp. So I'm gonna take this view rotation tool, this orbit tool, I'm gonna to click that button, and now I can sort of rotate them off axis a little bit, all right? So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude these, these out. So these are the front edges of our upper cabinet. I'm gonna pull them out, so to give it actually some, some three-dimensional depth. Uh, so I'm gonna do that using this push-pull tool here. And um, I want to change the view, so I use that orbit tool. So you can just kind of, rather than looking at front of it, we, we give sort of an isometric or uh, 3D view of that scene. It allows us to get a better perspective of what we're doing. So I'm gonna select this guy here, and so I can pull it this way. And at this point, it doesn't matter if you wanted to build the cabinets this way or the other way, but I'm gonna pull this back and let it go. And then I want this, I'm gonna change this distance down here to be 12. So that's 12 inches back. And I'm gonna repeat that for this guy. So 12 inches. Okay, so now we have the two sides of our upper cabinet. So we can again, click on our front view. And there, there, those are almost like a, uh, one of those uh, Star Wars <laughs> TIE fighters, I guess. Um, I forgot what they were called for a second. <laughs> so, uh, I'm a Star Trek fan. So anyway, I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. Now we'll draw our top and our bottom. Or actually, we can even, we can even draw the, the back piece if we wanted to, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's, let's go ahead and draw the top and the bottom. And we'll do that again by coming up here. Now for, um, this particular cabinet, let's suppose, now we need to know how we're, how we're putting this thing together. So are we gonna use grooves so this top panel would fit into some kind of like slot on the side of that board? Or are we gonna use some kind of pocket screw system? So, and that makes a difference when we're drawing this because if we're gonna draw this upper cabinet uh, using pocket screws, then it's gonna be a butt joint. It's just gonna hit there and stop. But if it's gonna have a groove, then we need to account for that groove. So why don't we do this? Just so you get the perspective of what's this like. The top one will will draw with uh, grooves, and the bottom piece of this upper cabinet will will draw with pocket screws. So you get some perspective on what the differences are. Um, so, how far down do I want to do this? Um, well, if you wanted to have a, a shelf or like a little pocket at the top of your cabinet, let's say three eighths of an inch. So I can pull this down and type in three eighths. Okay, so now we have our guidelines. So you see how I'm using these guidelines here. I'm also gonna use this top piece will be three quarters of an inch thick. So I'm gonna pull this down three quarters of an inch. Great. All right, so you start to get a lot more uh, guidelines snapped all over the place. So if it's helpful to you, what you can do is you can select the first one we used and delete it, because uh, we're not gonna use it anymore. And now we have our guidelines showing where this, this top board will be. All right, so since I said we're gonna be uh, building this cabinet using grooves, usually those grooves are about half the thickness of, of the board you're going into. All right, so this sideboard here is three quarters of an inch thick. I would put a groove in it that's three eighths of an inch deep. All right, so what would that look like and how would we represent that on here? Well, what I would do is again, take my side piece and or my tape measure, highlight it over the tool so I get the red mark, and I'm gonna pull it into the surface and then I'm gonna type in three eighths. Okay, so that's three eighths of an inch thick. I'll repeat that over here. And it automatically snapped to three eighths of an inch, which, which makes life really easier for everybody. 
All right, so now I can draw a, um, well, there's a couple things I can do. I can just draw my box across here and, and extrude it in, but I think it'll be helpful to show the groove and then to draw the actual piece. So I'm going to take my pencil tool and I'm going to start at this intersection. I'm going to draw one, two, three pieces. And then I'll come over here and do one, two, three, four. All right, so now I have separated this little box from the rest of the sideboard. Okay, so now what I can do is I can use my um, extrude button here and I can select that little tag, that little box I just drew, and I can push it all the way down, okay, until it gets off the board and then it sort of disappears. I'm going to repeat that over here, okay? All right, go on. So now we, we just drew grooves or dados in our sideboards. So now to, to add our top board, all we need to do is draw a rectangle from this upper left-hand corner to this bottom right-hand corner, and boom. Now we have the front, and that's a two-dimensional piece we just drew, so we want to give it depth. And so the question is, so where, where would we draw the, you know, where would we draw this to? Um, so again, you need to know how this cabinet's going together before you draw it in SketchUp. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to, and we can always change this later. So this, this is, this is what, um, this tool allows us to kind of explore our build options. So I'm looking at, I've changed the view, so I'm looking at the top down into it. I grab my, my push-pull button here, and I'm going to pull this back. So now how far do I pull this back? Well, it depends where we put our back piece. Um, if I want it all the way to the back, I can just select that edge, this endpoint, and then it will snap it right to the back. Or I can type in, you know, let it go, and then type in some arbitrary value. All right, so I, if you want to stop what you're doing, undo something, I always hit Control or Command Z, and that's the undo button. Okay, so I realize now I really need to know uh, where my back piece is going to go before I do this. Uh, and I like to put my backboards in a little bit. So before I extrude this top board, let's figure out our back piece. So what I can do is I can switch views and take a top perspective of the cabinet we're building. All right, so from the top, let's put in a groove, and again, I'm going to, Need to zoom in until I get my red box. All right, so let's see if I can use my measuring tape to get a little red. Uh, let's see. I see, I don't think, if you grab it from the end point, it's not really going to work well, I don't think. So let's zoom in a little more. And if we have to focus this on one piece, that's fine too. So I can always just come over here and just keep zooming in until I get what I want. All right, tape measure tool, boom. Okay, so there's our... Um, this is a guideline that corresponds to the back of the cabinet. And now I'm going to come in, uh, let's just say 3 eighths of an inch, okay? Let's just, I'm fairly arbitrary. 3 eighths of an inch, and now my back pieces, I usually use um, quarter inch backing material. So I'm going to snap another line that's 0.25 inches down from that one, so that's a quarter inch. And again, because I like to use um, uh, grooves, if I'm going to put this back panel in a groove, I like to use, uh, set them to the depth that's equal to half of the material it's going into. So that's three-eighths of an inch, so I can just uh, snap it to three-eighths or type in three-eighths. And again, I don't need this top piece, this top guideline, so I can select that and delete it. And now if I select this zoom extents button, everything shows up in one box. And I could, um, so again, what we're going to do, we're going to use the pencil tool, and we're going to select this box for deletion. All right, so I'm going to, oh, I need to draw another one over here. All right, snap that to three-eighths. Pencil tool, and we go one, two, three, four. This is just like we did in the sideboards. And now I'm going to hit uh, this button. Now, this is going to be tricky because... Um, it runs into a groove. All right, so it deletes part of the way, and then it stops because there's already a groove there. So how do we fix that? Well, we can just keep pushing it, but I'm going to zoom in and show you what I do. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to grab my hand, and I'm going to use my um, tool here, and I'm going to select this line. I'm going to delete that line. All right. All right, so now we have a groove the whole way across. So I'm, I'm kind of messing with the perspective here to see what this looks like. All right, so you can see what we did. We just kind of chipped off a piece there. 
All right, so let's, let's go back to the top view and we'll scale it back up. And what I can do is I can draw down from here again. So I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to All right, so I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to select down. Again, I'm trying to get this red box. And you don't want to select, see how if, if I drop it on this, this line here, it's not going to work. Uh, so I'm going to just leave it low and then type in 3 8 All right, and then from that red line, I'm going to chop down another 0.25. All right, and now if I draw another box here, all right. All right, now I can select this guy. That's a total other box. So I can select that and get rid of that guy. All right, so we've gotten rid of, we've actually added a groove there. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that on the other side. All right, so to make this thing less confusing, I'm going to try to delete the lines associated with our first cut because it's just a mess of guidelines at this point. All right, so now I can move this. All right, so I've got this line I still need to delete. All right, now I can draw again my pencil. So, you know, this can be a little tedious, you know. All right, and again, I'm going to select that and push that all the way open. All right, so let's fix our view. We'll go top view again. Uh, I want the whole thing. All right, so now we have our back groove put in. Um, you can see it was a little challenging because we had to cut through one piece and then there's a gap and then we had to cut through the next piece. Um, so that's gonna happen, that's okay. But now if I come and look at the front, all right, we have our top board, the start of that. Let's change our perspective. Look at all these guidelines. So if you get sick of the guidelines, you can just go to view and, and click on guides and turn that off if you want. Uh, I like working with them, but they can be a bit much. So we're gonna zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, all right, so this is our top board. I'm gonna hit push pull and I'm gonna pull this. And I'm gonna stop it right at this edge. Okay, so I can click this endpoint and let go and then I'm good. So now our top board runs right into that, uh, runs right into that back groove. All right. So now I could draw the backboard in. You know, and why don't we do that now? So that'll just be a matter of taking our rectangle tool. We'll see if we can do it from this angle. But I'm going to start at this corner and pull it to that corner. Cool. All right. So now we have our start of our backboard. It's just again, it's just a two-dimensional shape. It, this point but what I want to do is pull it down so I can pull this down all right all right so I can just pull this all the way down and I can snap it to the next end point okay so now that we've drawn um, one, two, three, four pieces of this six part cabinet. We will uh, rotate it and draw our bottom board. Now the bottom board we discuss would be a um, pocket screw. So it's gonna be a little easier. So we kind of did the hard one first. So let's just review what we did. So if I zoom in here, I'm gonna show you something. Actually it happens quite often. Is if I look, this is actually like a hollow looking board. So when we pulled this top board out, it actually kind of hollowed out. So to fix that, I'm just gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna draw down and close it. So you connect any two points and it'll close that surface. I don't know why it does that. Uh, but this is the top of our cabinet. So if I go down to the bottom, again, this is an upper cabinet and say like a kitchen or a built-in or something like that. Uh, that we don't have anything here. We have our three sides or our two sides in our back. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch perspectives and I'm gonna to go to front, and we're gonna repeat the same process we did up there. I'm gonna turn back on my guides, all right, so they're active now. 
and I'm going to use the same sort of 3 8 inch up from the bottom. And that's not really a standard. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show you the pers I wanted to show you more clearly how cutting grooves and SketchUp and stuff works. So, but you can always make these flush in the top of the bottom. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, now we, we already have this guideline down here, so this is going to make this easier. So I'm going to take my guide tool and I can select it and pull up. And I want to make sure when I pull up on this, I have that blue line. It says if, if you move this over, it could, you can pull this sort of a different way. So I can pull it horizontally, but I want to pull it vertically. And again, I'm going to just let it go and type in 3 eighths of an inch. And um, let's pull it up again and type in 3 quarters of an inch. All right, now I'm going to select this bottom line and get rid of that because we don't need that. And this is where our bottom board will be. And I will, let's see, uh, I'm going to select, oh, I'm going to go back down in here. And I'm going to move this around. I'm going to zoom in again. All right, so now we can draw our bottom board. All right, so let's take our rectangle tool and I'm going to select this corner. I'm going to pull it over to this corner. All right, so let me show you what this did. Sometimes, again, this happens. This thing does some weird stuff with surfaces, but it closed the opening of our cabinet. And I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do to undo that is to select this surface, okay, <clears throat> that represents the closing of the cabinet. I'm just going to select it, and I just use the cursor to do that, and I'm just going to hit delete. All right, no big deal. All right, so now, just so you have some perspective, I'm going to orbit this over, and I'm going to look at it from behind, and I'm going to use the push-pull tool. I'm going to grab the back of that rectangle. So I can go this way or this way with it. And I'm going to pull it and I'm going to pull it until I touch the cursor touches the surface and it says on edge. Do you want to pull this piece to the edge? And I do. And I'm going to let go and I'm good. So here is our cabinet as we've drawn it so far. And again, I'll turn off the guide so we get a good perspective of what this looks like. But here is our upper cabinet. <laughs> So again, we did the bottom cabinet, let's say tentatively using pocket screws, so those are all butt joints. Uh, and the top joint, or the top piece is put in with grooves and dados. The backboard slides into a groove, okay? And uh, we would probably glue that and maybe nail uh, this backboard into the top and bottom pieces if we wanted to. And we can go ahead and add shelves, and I would add shelves in, in here the same way we added the bottom. Um, by sort of drawing some guidelines and then pushing in or extruding in a just a you know a rectangle in there what you want to do um, so the last thing we'll do in this lesson and, and we're getting on nearly a half hour here will be to draw a door so we'll draw a shaker style door and we're going to do a half overlay door so a half overlay versus a full overlay so if i were going to do a full overlay door the door would completely cover this frameless cabinet Remember, this, this type of cabinet is like an Ikea cabinet. There's no face frame. Um, so um, hinges for frameless cabinets are usually either full overlay where they cover the entire cabinet once the door's closed, or they cover half of it, and they, they sit in about 3 eighths inch from each side, uh, depending upon the thickness of your sides. So let's, um, let's go ahead and draw a very quick... Um, you know, let's do full overlay because it's a little easier and, and I don't want to run too, too long. Uh, so I'm going to turn my guides back on. Now there's a bunch of ways we can do this. I'm going to do it sort of looking down. All right, so I'm going to take a top view so I can move my orbit tool to do that. And you know what? To clean this up, I'm going to select my cursor. Let's, I'm going to select all these guidelines and delete them. All right, because they kind of get crowded and we don't need them anymore. All right, so I can just do that. All right, so I'm going to select the top view of this shed here uh, using this perspective tool. Okay, there's the top. And I'm going to zoom in a bit. All right. Okay, now let's turn the guides back. The guides are on. I'm going to use the measuring tape. And I'm going to select any red point on this surface. Now, this is flush with the front of our cabinet. All right, so I'm going to just pull it up, let it go. So we're at zero. So we're at that, that even face. Uh, now what I can do is I can actually pull it down like an eighth of an inch if I wanted a gap between the door and the cabinet. But since this is really just, I mostly use this for illustrative purposes and, and concept drawings. I don't really care about getting that terribly accurate. So what I'll do is, uh, again, I'll 
get a couple more guides here to, to I want to sort of put bounds on the door and then I'm, I want a three quarter inch thick door and I'm going to pull that three quarters of an inch down. All right, so now we have a, a rectangle at the top using the guides that we can draw a, another rectangle into. So let's take our rectangle tool. I'm going to select that corner. I'm going to select this corner. Oh, that didn't work. So we want endpoint. Let's try taking. All right, so it's not letting me snap there. Ah. Oh, okay. So it's not coplanar. So this is something you'll run into occasionally. When I drew these, these guidelines, I drew uh, one of them off the top of the cabinet. I drew one of them off the, the top of this top piece. So they're actually not, they don't run together. They don't converge anywhere. So I can't um, use those same points. Uh, isn't that a bummer? So there's a way around this. We're going to fix that. So let's go back to our top view, and I'm going to correct that. So I'm going to delete this line here, and I'm going to delete that line. So now these lines were snapped off the centerpiece, which is actually recessed into the cabinet. So I'm going to instead select the edge of the top of the cabinet. So I can slap that right there, all right, and I can snap it there. And now they should be the same level. So if I, so if I twist this around, they should be at the same level. And they're not, and that's because I snapped them to the top of that. That is a bummer. All right, so let's um, let's see. I know the easier way to do this, and that is to delete these again. All right, we're going to pull this out, and I'm going to snap it right where they were. All right, all right. So now they're on that line. Now they're coplanar, but they're not in the right spot. All right, so they're coplanar. That's where we want them but I want them out three, three quarters of an inch on each side. So I'm going to use those first lines, pull them out three quarters of an inch, and I've got to make sure that I don't pull them up to here, because if I do, it'll, take them, it, it'll leave them off axis, and I don't want to do that. I just want to kind of pull them out that way, right, and then type in three quarters of an inch. And I want to pull them this way and type in three quarters of an inch. All right, so now I think I have something I can work with. So now I'm going to take my rectangle tool, and do that. No, that didn't work. It's, try, it's tough getting that corner there. Boom. All right, now I've got something I can work with. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up to the top of the cabinet, and now I'm going to rotate it, and I'm going to pull it down. Pull it down the length of the cabinet. All right, and I can just keep pulling this bit by bit. All right, and I can actually zoom out so I see if I. You have to be at a, it has to be in the frame so you can see it when you're doing this. All right, so I'm gonna again, so I can stop and, and start and keep pulling this if I want to. I'm gonna pull it down to the bottom. All right, so now I have a, a door, like a block of wood basically sitting on there, and I could, uh, so if I wanna make this a shaker door, right, that's easy. First, I'll get rid of my line, my guidelines, I don't need them anymore, and quite frankly, they're gonna get in the way. So I'm going to now snap new guidelines, and let's say they're two-inch styles and rails. So I'll just pull this in and do two, pull this in from the top and do two. And once you do two edges, the others should snap to two. They do, so I don't need to keep typing it, two. And now I can draw an inner box or an inner rectangle. All right. Cool. And now I can extrude this in. So you see what this is doing. I'll extrude this in let's say a quarter inch. So I'll type in 0.25, boom. All right, so I'm going to hide my guides so you see what that looks like. Now just to give this a little more definition, I'm gonna draw some vertical lines here to represent actual style boards and rail boards where they intersect. And so I'm gonna zoom in. And to do that, actually let's do a front view. And I'm just gonna take my pencil and draw from here to there, from here to there. And I'm not gonna do anything with them, I'm just gonna leave them there. I'm just gonna draw them and leave them there. All right, from there to there, and from there to there. Okay, so let's click on the isometric picture. We'll click on that button, and there we go. We have a fully built 
a fully dimensioned uh, upper cabinet that we can put in a kitchen or a workshop. And uh, so now if I was building this for a client or you know my wife or something, I can, I can show her this drawing and say, hey, this is what the cabinet looks like. How, how, what do you think? And then I could you know, kind of throw it in a mock-up of a room or just use this to help me dimension it. So now that this is built, I can take my tape measure and say, oh, well, you know, what's this length of this board? Oh, right, it's 42 inches. And what's the depth of this front piece? Oh, right, it's 12 inches. Um, oh, or what's, what is it front to the door? You know, oh, it's 12 and 3 quarter, right. So, I, you know, I can use this to sort of plan out my, my woodworking project. So, you know, if I wanted to, I can select our paint bucket tool, add the plywood, and, you know, just go nuts here, coloring this out with, with different things. But we'll, so we'll leave it at this for now. So that's basically, you know, how you use SketchUp to build a more complex 3D structure. It's a lot of using your tape measuring tool to snap guidelines, and uh, it's not too hard but it, it takes some practice trying to figure out where you pull those lines in from. But uh, you pretty much draw snap lines or your guidelines and you, you draw your structure from those. So in our next lesson, um, I will build a, a uh, face frame base cabinet to a kitchen. So a, a, a bottom cabinet you would put in a kitchen and we'll do it with face frames and, and, and we'll do inset doors so you can see what, what that looks like. And that lesson will be uh, available only to Cabinets from Scratch subscribers. So if you have a subscription to the Cabinets from Scratch video course, um, that particular, the third lesson in the series will be available to you there. Uh, so for more information on that, you can visit cabinetsfromscratch.com and I have a link to that in the, in the uh, lesson notes or the video notes here. And we will see you in the next video.